mind is derivative. In the other worldview, mind is primary and mass energy is derivative. Is derivative. Is derivative. Is derivative. Is derivative. And so far as tonight's lecture is concerned, it is the diametrical opposition between the worldview of materialism and the worldview of theism. It is a conflict between these two worldviews, but I want you to notice there are scientists on each side of it. Now, what's the, the better candidate? Now, abstract objects, the problem with them, with these abstract objects is they're causally defeat, meaning they can't cause anything. Like, for example, the number one can't cause anything. The simple law of arithmetic, one plus one equals two, never brought anything into being. I wish it did. It never has put any money into my bank account. If I put a thousand pounds into the bank today and later another thousand pounds, the laws of arithmetic will rationally explain how it is that I now have two thousand pounds in the bank. But if I never put any money into the bank myself and simply leave it to the laws of arithmetic to bring money into being, I shall be permanently bankrupt. C.S. Lewis, with usual brilliance, grasped this years ago. The laws of nature produce no events. They state the pattern to which every event, if only it can be induced to happen, must conform. Just as the rules of arithmetic state the pattern to which all transactions with money must conform, if only you can get a hold of any money. Thus, in one sense, the laws of nature cover the whole field of space and time. In another, what they leave out is precisely the whole real universe. The incessant torrent of actual events which makes up true history, that must come from somewhere else. To think the laws can produce it is like thinking that you can create real money by simply doing sums. For every law says in the last resort, if you have A, then you will get B. But first catch your A. The laws will not do it for you. Now scientists love developing theories involving mathematical laws to describe natural phenomena which enable them to make predictions and they've done it with spectacular success but most are aware I think that on their own the theories and laws that they find cannot create anything let alone a universe yet Hawking seems to think they did Professor Stephen Hawking says that modern science has established there was no need for God in the creation of the universe in a new book Hawking suggests that a theoretical framework known as M theory can explain how the Big Bang was an inevitable consequence of the laws of physics. According to him, it is the laws of physics, not the will of God, that provide the real explanation as to how the universe came into being. The Big Bang, he argues, was the inevitable consequence of these laws. I quote, because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Now a supernatural being or God is an agent who does something. Dismissing such an agent, Hawking ascribes creative power to physical law. But physical law is not an agent. Hawking, it seems to me, is making a classical category mistake by confusing two entirely different kinds of entity. Physical law and personal agency. Our physical laws are a description, usually mathematical, of what normally happens under certain given conditions. This is surely obvious from the very first example that Hawking gives in his book, The Sun Rises in the East. But this law does not create the Sun, nor the planet Earth with East and West. It is descriptive and predictive, but not creative. Similarly, Newton's laws of gravitation doesn't create gravity or the matter in which gravity acts. In fact, it doesn't even explain gravity as Newton himself realized. But it's even worse. The laws of physics cannot even cause anything to happen. Newton's celebrated laws of motion never caused a pool ball to race across the table. That can only be done by people using a pool cue in the action of their muscles. Suppose to make matters clearer, we replace the universe by a jet engine, and we are asked to explain it. Shall we account for it by mentioning the personal agency of its inventor, Sir Frank Whittle, 
or shall we, following Hawking, dismiss personal agency and explain the jet engine by saying it arose naturally from physical law? Now, this would be absurd. It is obvious we need both levels of explanation in order to give a complete description. It is also obvious that the scientific explanation neither conflicts nor competes with the agent explanation. They complement one another. It is the same with explanations of the universe. God does not conflict or compete with the laws of physics as an explanation. God is actually the ground of all explanation in the sense that he is the ultimate cause in the first place of there being a world for the laws of physics to describe. Now, there's more to this because the laws of physics can explain how the jet engine works but not how it came to exist in the first place. The jet engine needed the intelligence and creative engineering work of Whittle. Indeed, come to think of it, the laws of physics plus Frank Whittle could not actually produce a jet engine on their own. There also needed to be some material subject to those laws that could be worked on by Whittle. Matter, ladies and gentlemen, may be humble stuff, but it is not produced by laws. I submit to you that the world of strict naturalism in which clever mathematical laws all by themselves bring the universe and life into existence is pure science fiction. Pure science fiction. Now, Hawking here echoes Peter Atkins, a colleague at Oxford, a well-known atheist who believes that space-time generates its own dust in the process of its own self-assembly. Atkins dubs this the cosmic bootstrap principle, referring to the self-contradictory idea of a person lifting himself by pulling on his own bootlaces. Philosopher religion Keith Ward is surely right to say that Atkins' view of the universe is as blatantly self-contradictory as the name he gives to it pointing out that it is logically impossible for a cause to bring about some effect without already being in existence. Ward concludes, between the hypothesis of God and the hypothesis of a cosmic bootstrap, there's no competition, there's no competition, there's no competition, there's no competition. We were always right to think that persons or universes who seek to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps are forever doomed to failure. What perhaps all this goes to show is that nonsense remains nonsense even when talked by world famous scientists. By world famous scientists. So the only alternative is an unbodied mind, what theists call God.